Hello everyone! Good news! The inevitable robot uprising is finally here! But unlike Terminator, they don't want to wipe us out, they just want our money. Also unlike Terminator, they don't come from Skynet, instead they're coming from Indiegogo. And they are coming in droves. Let's just dive into it already with a robot named Buddy. Holy shit. We just started and already we have a robot that sex offenders shouldn't be allowed within 500 yards of. Buddy is always there for what really matters. He reminds you of important tasks and events on your agenda. Wake up, my film. Don't forget, it's mom's birthday today. <laughs> Buddy, turn on the lights. Let's go wake up Juliet. Awesome, we already have bad dubbing. Go ahead and mark that space on your bingo card. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Mom. Happy birthday. Buddy makes your post-it board come alive. He can assist with messaging and relay the right message to the right family member. Buddy, remind Mom not to come back home before 8 o'clock. Okay, right there, they inadvertently exposed one of the weak points of a robot. Before kids are able to fully understand responsibility and consequences, and how expensive appliances can be, they turn the household into this perpetual Grand Theft Auto environment. They fuck with everything. They will find countless ways to torture this poor robot and void his warranty. Buddy is a hands-free helper, <laughs> always there when you need him. Ah, let's take a minute to criticize this shot. The robot is nodding, and you could see that it has a joint right there for the neck. So why is the whole thing rocking back and forth? Could it be that this is actually a puppet and not a working prototype? No, no, of course not. Veronica. Okay, buddy, take the call. Okay, I'm leaving now. See you in half an hour. Why did she tell the robot to take a call and then now she's leaving? Wow, we've made so much progress in the 21st century. The first robot with separation anxiety. He brings you peace of mind. Please tell me you guys noticed this. The camera is all bullshit. Why is it bobbing around like that? That's not how Buddy moves. Is it possible they don't even have the fucking camera working on that thing yet? Buddy, can you help Matilde? Buddy is an edutainment is companion. Seven times se oh yeah, right. Young kids are only gonna look up curse words with Buddy. Thanks, buddy. Follow me. Okay, wait up. I'm calling bullshit on that. First off, how did Buddy get up the stairs? And if he traveled across town, how did he not get kidnapped by Jawas? Buddy keeps your loved ones close to each other. He allows you to communicate with your loved ones, being there with them for moments that count. Hello, Grandma. Buddy, send the birthday cake picture. Okay, I guess two buddies can communicate with each other, but they don't make that clear. Let's play hide and seek. Why? Always me. Buddy is a playmate. 49, 48. He plays hide and seek. He can also play seek and destroy. Buddy is part of your everyday life. He is your butler, your watchdog, <sighs> or just your friendly companion. Hi, Indigo Go. My name is Rodolf Hasselwander. I'm not trying to make fun of this guy, but my brain is so screwed up after watching that pitch, I seriously can't tell if he's dubbed or not. Now we need you to build Buddy and make him accessible to everyone. Let's work together to make Buddy the best companion to robot in the world. So join our journey and be one of the first people to experience Buddy. If that robot can understand their own CEO, then this is going to be the most advanced robot in the fucking world. And if you want to keep score, this project got $653,000 last year. But let's move on to the next one. And while we're going through this, try to see if you can catch any similarities. Our next robot is Ido. Meet Ido. Hi, Ido. Uh, are you guys gonna talk anymore? Uh, hello? Are you there? Well, any fucking day now. Hello? What can I do for you today? Oh, fuck. That's not creepy at all. Ido is a part of your family. Shit, finally! Guys, I'm not kidding you, this pitch is over four minutes long, but there is so much dead air, 
So much time where you're just waiting for something to be said that I decided to cut out all those parts and now it's a one minute pitch. So yeah, I don't have time for their shit. We're watching the cut version. He's an intelligent, capable, and affordable companion. Morning, I know. What's going on today? Oh, thank God, guys. Thank God for these robot makers. We finally have a contraption that can wake us up in the morning. He can do just about anything. The help you have always wanted. A handyman. A teacher. A friend. This is fun. Okay, no offense to British people, but this robot has the creepiest fucking voice I've ever heard. This is fun. It's like they found Jack the Ripper and gave him a job. He is perfect in every way. He can be just about anyone. Hey, cool cosplay! He's Slenderman! Again, what's with the weird-ass camera work? Why would you do that? It's obvious their prototype doesn't work. This is a handheld camera. But couldn't they at least try to make a stable? A carer. A homemaker. He's a personal butler who's trustworthy. Oh, bullshit. He did not open that door. He has no arms. And what a great security system. He does the face recognition after he opens the door. He is whatever you want him to be. I started off as an idea to make cutting-edge robotics friendly and useful to the home, while being affordable. I have been overwhelmed by all the love and recognition I have received so far. Now, I need your help and support to make me really great. Adopt me as your new companion at home. You don't buy this robot, you adopt him. I like to think if they just have a whole bunch of unsold stock, or no, excuse me, a lot of robots that haven't been adopted yet, then they're just gonna set them loose and then we'll have a big homeless robot problem. Oh, and did they mention that it doesn't have any wheels or anything? It's balanced on, like, this ball? Oh yeah, and you could be sure that there's a working prototype of that. Ido from InGen Dynamics. Ah, cool, it's from InGen. And we know that nothing bad comes from InGen. <laughs> So yeah, that's Ido, and it raised $660,000 this year. And next we have Alpha 2, a humanoid robot. Introducing Alpha 2, the newest member of your family. Okay, Joyce, let's move to the next pose. Okay. With 20 joints replicating human motion, he's as flexible as a yogi. Good job, Joyce. Alpha 2 is smarter than your smartphone. Rise and shine. And he makes a great tutor. Alpha, what's the word for orange juice in Spanish? Tortillas. Jugo de naranja. Jugo de naranja. Si, muy bien. <laughs> Alright, so again, robots are going to teach us yoga, and it's going to wake you up, because there's no other way to do that either. And he speaks different languages, which is a topic that we're going to get into later. Alpha 2 is like an in-home nurse, or a veterinarian. Hey, boy. Alan, Oliver is due for his flea medication. Thanks, Alpha. Yay! Eh, but I guess he doesn't speak dog. If he did, he'd know he's getting fucked up. Alpha 2 is the perfect office assistant. Voicemail 3. Joyce, it's Cindy Patterson again. I just saw the cake and it only has five tiers instead of seven. Alpha, call all city cakes and print out a copy of that contract. Okay, Joyce. Alright, I think I'm not the only one who noticed that when he replayed that message, he was making like these mocking gestures, and that does kind of fit the pitch video. I can see they're trying to be humorous, the lady on the other line is complaining about a cake getting destroyed or something. But what if it was a real life or death emergency? How does the robot know the difference? Voicemail 3 Hello, honey. I just wanted to tell you I love you so much. I'm hiding under my desk right now. There's a shooter in the building. Where's a good guy with a gun when you need him? This is what I get for not voting for Trump. Oh my god, I did it! He's a weatherman. Bye, Alpha. Goodbye, Kate. If you're going out, there's a 75% chance of rain. Thanks, Alpha. And a handyman. All right, I got the flange off. What's next, Alpha? Step four, use a small screwdriver to attach the adapter flange. Thanks, Alpha. I'm sorry, but these pitch videos are loaded with so much bullshit. How do you expect him to bring all that stuff at a moment's notice? It's a complete fantasy. Alpha, let's dance. Okay. Alpha 2 is the humanoid robot that makes a fun friend for the whole family. Oh, hey. Alpha can make anyone look like a moron. <laughs> Alpha, take a picture and post to Facebook. 
Alright, so if your feed couldn't get clogged up with more annoying fucking updates, just wait for people to start getting robots. Alpha, download the Storyteller app. Downloading Storyteller app. That is so messed up. The father just doesn't want to interact with his son. But don't worry, the robot will. Surely that's not going to cause any developmental problems. Alpha 2. Make him a member of your family today. In a world filled with technology, we have all been looking for something more. Alright, again, I'm not making fun of these guys, but if the CEO has an accent like that, then I'm expecting some amazing voice recognition. Please support us today and help make Alpha to a reality, because together we can dream of robots. Hello, Alpha. Hello. Oh yeah, I'm sure that actually happened. The true mark of a working prototype. And this project got $1.3 million last year. But our tour must continue onwards to Pillow, the only robot here that can kill you. In today's hectic world, it's getting increasingly difficult to remember what truly matters. The health of you and your loved ones. But now, someone can help. With his artificial intelligence, Pillow recognizes each and every member of your family and starts caring for them. Clara, here are your cholesterol pills. I see you're running low. Shall I reorder them for you? Thank you, Pillow. That'd be great. Pillow is 100% secure. Ah, Pillow is 100% secure. I mean, it does cater to different members of your family. But don't worry, it's not going to mix any pills or give you the wrong dosage or anything. Yeah, yeah, no worries. It's in an Indiegogo pitch, so it must be true. And his skills and functionalities will grow the more you use him, the more he gets to know you. Yeah, so you know the medication industry, the one that's, you know, heavily regulated by the FDA, and what looks like the easiest job in the world, but people still have to go to school and get a degree for it because, you know, it involves life or death scenarios? Yeah, let's put all of that in the hands of a robot on Indiegogo. Sounds like a great plan. Here are your vitamins to go. Enjoy your training session, Liza. Thank you, Pillow. Since Pillow's always connected, he can answer all of your health-related questions. Pilo, how many calories are in a celery stick? Six calories, Clara. Celery is excellent for your health. Great, I'll have a bunch then. Aww. Aww, they taught Pillow to love. We created Pillow to address a critical need, the health and well-being of you and your loved ones. We've assembled a great team of healthcare professionals, entrepreneurs, and robotics experts with years of experience in the field. I love how when they say robotics expert, they just look at the Asian guy. Yeah, of course he's a robotics expert. Can't you tell? He's Asian. He probably is a fucking robot. And we have what it takes to make Pillow a reality. We now ask you to join us as we enter the next exciting phase of bringing our prototype to production. Together, we can reinvent the future of personal health. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Pillow. And Pillow raised $102,000 just a couple weeks ago. All right, now I could go on and on. There are so many fucking robots on Indiegogo. In fact, I don't even know how many there are. Every time I thought I reached the end, there was like two or three more. And I'm not even counting the build-it-yourself educational kids robots either. I even found this one called Autumn, which was apparently on Indiegogo, but I can't find any trace of it. All the links to the Indiegogo page don't work. I did find their pitch video, though, and it is really fucking creepy. Hi, my name is Autumn. Wait, wait, is it Autumn or Wadam? Hi, my name is Autumn. I have been created to be a personal coach and I would love to help you to develop healthier eating and exercise habits. Say no more, I know exactly how this thing works. It's a great weight loss solution. You put that fucking thing in the kitchen and I will never step foot in there again. After two weeks of that, you'll be confusing me for an Olsen twin. And I can't find any other information about it. I don't even know if the project got funded. So really, I don't think anyone knows how many robots have been on Indiegogo. There's so many of them and... Wait, 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 back up. What the fuck was that? The Auto Blow 2. What the fuck? Hey guys, the days of doing it yourself are finally over. There's got to be a better way. This is the Auto Blow 2. I've invented the best male sex toy ever. Why? Because it's powerful, it's automatic, it's hands free, it's super easy to clean, it's dishwasher safe. This is what the Auto Blow 2 looks like on the inside. I bet the Auto Blow 1 was a watermelon with a dustbuster attached to it. Let me show you how it works. First, you insert your sleeve. Next, you plug your Auto Blow 2 into any wall outlet. But Brian, is that safe? 
In fact, yes, it's totally safe. In other words, it won't electrocute your dick. Would it have killed them to leave me the option? Next, apply a water-based lubricant to your penis. Then turn it on using this dial. You can get off slowly I think if any of you have a fetish where you want to be blown by a manta ray, then this is probably the tool for you. You can get off at a medium speed. Or you can get off in a damn hurry. But there's an even higher setting. They call it your mom. This motor is rated to stroke you for a thousand hours. Or until your dick falls off. All right, if you ordered this shit, you are really fucking sad. But do you know what's even sadder? Out of all the robot projects you're gonna see in this video, the Auto Blow 2 is the only one that's delivered. That is insane. But they can't all be winners. So let's take a moment to look at some of the projects that didn't meet their goal. There's Nixie, the incredibly shitty robot that uses caster wheels. But don't worry, the creator didn't leave empty-handed, thanks to the miracle of flexible funding. And then you have Amy, a robot assistant, and holy shit, look at how these people live! Alright, yeah, I think this is appealing to a different consumer demographic. These people don't want a robot to be another member of their family. These people want a robot because slavery was abolished. Seriously, I'm gonna go visit a third world country, I'm gonna bring this pitch video, and I'm gonna tell those people, hey, you know how you have to work your ass off over here? Well, where I come from, these people are trying to build robots because life isn't easy enough. And yeah, this robot claims to do all the same bullshit, except for one extra thing. This robot has a sense of fashion. How do I look today, Amy? Very great, Robbie. You look very nice. Thank you. It's very nice. But unfortunately, there weren't enough people with spats and top hats to carry this to its goal. But don't worry, even though it failed, the creator didn't leave empty-handed thanks to the miracle of flexible funding. Next, we have Robit, a robot with a really fucking creepy face. But it should, because one of the uses is to keep pets off furniture. And I gotta say, that's pretty ingenious. That would be a good use for one of these robots. They also wanted it to help you find things that you lost. The creator of this project actually had some really interesting ideas. He even gave it a missile launcher. But that might be expected, it's from Israel. I'm surprised it can't build a fucking wall. And even though it failed, the creator got $36 thanks to the miracle of flexible funding. So while this one had some really interesting ideas going for it, I think we can agree that all these robot projects have some really fucking stupid ideas in them. And even when they try to be adorable, they just come out looking stupid. But maybe that's just because we haven't visited the land of adorably stupid ideas yet. Meet Tapia, the Japanese robot that is the complete opposite of what you think of when you hear the words Japanese robot. Hurry up. Wake up. You got a meeting at 9.30. It's already being late. Okay, so again, we have a robot that's trying to be an alarm clock, but why did he wake her up late? You only slept for an hour last night. Not good. So get home early today. You know this robot is Japanese because it pressures you to be a more efficient person. And? Do you need coffee? Wait, is that what Japanese women sleep in? I think nuns wear less. Tapia! Can you get the lipstick we did last time? What the fuck did she just say? Can you get the lipstick we did last time? What's with these robots understanding these horrible accents? I can barely understand these people. Reorder. Lux number 7 lipstick. Thank you. $39 lipstick? I hope that's a conversion error, but that is a dollar sign right there. Okay, that's the strangest thing about this. It doesn't have any wheels or anything, so you have to carry this thing everywhere. It's been two weeks since last time you call your mom. Don't you miss her? Oh, and you also know it's Japanese because it nags you to call your mother. But don't worry, even though it failed, the creator didn't leave empty-handed thanks to the miracle of flexible funding. Now, while that Tapia robot looks really fucking stupid and it can't even move around the house, it actually brings us back to where this all started. And for that, we go to a project for a robot named Jibo. 
Now, Jibo isn't the first robot project on Indiegogo. Again, it's hard to trace the stuff on Indiegogo, but I think that robot Autumn was the first one. But regardless, Jibo was the first huge success. It raked in an incredible $3.7 million. Introducing Jibo, the world's first family robot. Say hi, Jibo. Hi, Jibo. <laughs> oh, that's some binary humor, am I right? Aww. Jibo helps everyone out throughout their day. He's the world's best cameraman. I'm sure you guys can recognize a pattern with the features on all these robots by now, and they pretty much all copied it from Jibo. I'm not saying that Jibo is the truly original idea, because it plainly isn't, but what I am saying is that most of these robot projects are run by talentless hacks that just copy each other. He takes pictures. He helps you cook. He helps you out with your schedule. He interacts with your kids. He's... a teleportation device? He's the closest thing to a real-life teleportation device. Oh, that's what they meant by teleportation device. Well, in that case, beam me up, Skype. Can you order some takeout for me? Sure thing. Chinese, as usual? You know me so well. And even be a great wingman. You have a voice message from... Ashley. Wanna hear it? He also orders food for you and sends you voice messages. So wait a second then, how is he any different than a phone or a tablet? Well, let's keep watching, maybe they'll tell us. We've dreamt of it for years, and now he's finally here. And he's not just an aluminum shell, nor is he just a three-axis motor system. He's not even just a connected device. Oh good, here we go, shut up, they're gonna tell us. He's... One of the family. Motherfucker! Again with this adopt-a-robot bullshit. One of the family. <laughs> Whoa, what the fuck? Did somebody just throw a used autoblow sleeve on him? Oh, Hugh, never mind. Good night, Tivo. What if technology actually treated you like a human being? Alright, so this lady, she's like the brains behind Jivo. She works in some capacity over at MIT. Something called social robotics. Get ready to hear some bullshit. What if technology helped you to feel closer to the ones you love? What if technology helped you like a partner, rather than simply being a tool? That's what Jibo's about. That's why I created this company. And I've got the right team to do it. People with a proven track record of bringing innovative technologies and exciting content to market. But now, we need your help to build Jibo, to bring it to the world, and to grow the community. Let's work together to make Jibo truly great, and together, we can humanize technology. Humanize technology. I have to disagree with the doctor here. Humanizing technology and making robots feel like a partner, I think that's a step backwards. Robots are functional tools. They don't need a personality any more than the tools they're hanging on the wall behind you. That is one of the most pervasive problems that we've seen in all the robot projects that we covered here. And I'm going to illustrate the problem with Star Wars. Because check this out, these robots are so smart, if we put all of them together and ask them, what do you want to be when you grow up, they would all say, I want to be C-3PO. He is the apex, the epitome of what they're all trying to do here. He is as close as you can get to humanized technology. In fact, I could argue that he embodies some of the worst qualities that humans possess. Think about it, when he's not translating, he's borderline useless. He's annoying. He's socially awkward. He has horrible timing. He's even said before that he doesn't understand human behavior. He's long-winded. He's easily frightened. He's slow. He's clumsy. I mean, he's pretty much like... They come in this little thing right here, which is... Oh, jeez. <laughs> hey, shut up! But seriously, 90% of the time, C-3PO is not helpful. He's a burden. He is a machine who is hindered because he has human qualities. And as a counterexample, R2-D2 has far less personality. He can't even speak in a language other than beeps and boops. But yet, he is vastly more useful. But even with all those disadvantages, we still love C-3PO. I love C-3PO. And why is that? It's because he's comic relief. That's where the doctor fails. She doesn't get it, she's not in on the joke. We like the idea of a robot that acts like a human, because it's entertaining, not because it's productive. But that's not the only problem with this project. The Jibo was in the news recently because they're having problems with delivery. Like most projects, they overshot their delivery estimate. That's not a big deal. What is a big deal, though, is that they refunded a whole bunch of customers from overseas, and they're now saying they can only deliver to the United States and Canada. They have two reasons for that. The first one doesn't make a lot of sense to me. They say that the wireless networks in those other countries aren't going to work well on Jibo, and their second reason sounds a little more truthful. They say that they won't deliver to those other customers because Jibo doesn't work well with accents. What? 
You mean it's hard for a robot to understand people all across the world? Not everyone pronounces things the same way? You mean you can't just teach a robot English and then it knows English in different dialects and accents? Yep, so they can't even deliver to the UK. Because of course people speak English differently over there. I can't believe they didn't think about this. And remember, Jibo is definitely the most well-funded, and supposedly has the best people behind it, but they ran into this problem. Think of those other projects for a second. And now imagine this. This is hilarious. The CEOs on most of those projects probably won't be able to communicate with their robot. Why are they having this problem? Isn't this a problem Jibo could have figured out two years ago? I mean, obviously they showed the robot working in the video, so of course they had a working prototype, right? Yeah, bullshit. Let's think about this. Why do you think there are basically no robots on Kickstarter? The most popular and lucrative crowdfunding site has no robots on it, and they just so happen to have prototype requirements. And then on the other hand, you have a website that is pretty much the wild west of crowdfunding, where anything goes, where you can make pretty much any claim unchecked, and that site is fucking flooded with robots. Why do you think that is? Of course they don't have a prototype, and people gave up their money anyways. And now is the part of the episode where I get to gloat. You see, all these robots and everything, it's all part of a phenomenon that I predicted. You see, back then, when I was talking about the Scarp Laser Racer, I told you guys about something that I called the Early Worm Effect, which, when you get down to it, says that you should avoid these revolutionary and world-changing crowdfunding projects. Because if you do, you're probably going to feel the consequences of this effect. Because if an idea truly is revolutionary, then bigger companies will make a better copy of it. These Kickstarters with revolutionary ideas are great because they show that there is consumer demand out there for these products, but that market research does not exist in a vacuum. Bigger companies can see this and they're looking for the next big trend as well. And so now that you know that, would you like to take a quick guess as to what happened next in the field of personal robots? If you guess that Sony is getting in on the auto blow market... Nah, nah, I'm kidding. Here's what happened. Hi, I am Zenbo. Yep, a bigger company made a better copy of all that worthless shit you saw on Indiegogo. Zenbo helps you cook. Buy things online. Interacts with your kids. He does everything. It's also cheaper than most of the robots on Indiegogo. And even better, he's real. They plan to launch sometime next year. So to those people who buy into those crazy robots on Indiegogo, you are a sucker. Zenbo is cheaper, and I assure you it's going to deliver before any of those Indiegogo robots do. And not only that, you're going to get the first iteration of a product from some nobody on a crowdfunding site. You paid a premium for shit. And that's if it delivers at all, there's no guarantee there. But there is for Zenbo. You paid a sucker tax, that's what you did. Because you didn't want to wait. You were convinced that this is a world-changing technology, but you decided to go with the amateurs rather than waiting for the pros to show up and do it the right way. Your stupid little Indiegogo robot is going to suck dick harder than the auto blow stuck on full crack horse setting. As for me, if you can't tell, I'm not really into this whole robot thing. I just think it's kind of creepy. I don't know, maybe way into the future people will look back at this video and call me an anti-robotist or something. But I really don't think I'm the market they have in mind. And also, I'm going to take my own advice and wait and see what happens. Competition builds a better breed. Maybe Zenbo isn't the revolution we've been waiting for. What if a competitor shows up? Huh, you know, I, I can't imagine what that competitor would look like. Or what the product would be named. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. And that's why I wanted to show you guys with the early worm effect. It's okay to wait and see. You don't have to be the first sucker in line for something. But if you still don't believe me, and you still want to dive into Indiegogo's robot projects, then don't worry, they're not going anywhere. There's one that's still up right now. It's called Dummy. Yes, Dummy. The first intelligent robot that takes care of your family and your home. How does it do that? I don't know. Because I watched their pitch video, and this dummy isn't telling me what that dummy does. Guys, I give up. When the jokes start writing themselves, I know that my work is done here. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.